you're willing to make a hole in the woods, anybody can do solar. So this customer cleared out a spot, this landing that he wants for a garden spot. He was worried that the solar was going to encroach upon his gardening. And that's not going to be an issue at all. Um, we're also going to bring a water line up here, up the hill. And power for a future building that's going to go where that Mercedes van is. So we are able to put in here 42 panels, three adjustable rays. That's why I brought um, three setups because I didn't know what kind of terrain I was going to run into. Let's see the slope here and then it sloped there. And instead of trying to do it all in one or follow the terrain, I just bring three because we didn't know if we we're going to have to put one array down by the house. So we pretty much could show up sight unseen. And with a two post system, you can really beat the terrain. So the way this is set up, because the building's going to be over here, I made a southeast facing array that's really going to cook first thing in the morning. That's what he's going to get. And that's the way it operated this morning. It's going to be great. Bifacials, of course, will help. And, uh, and there's no pines around here, so all the leaves will come off here shortly. And that's going to help tremendously in the winter. Um, anyway, so you want to hide your solar. A lot of people are concerned about it. You don't want to see it from your house and you got enough property. Go ahead and make a hole. This hole is probably 100 by 100. Yeah, it's probably a third of an acre. But um, they're going to garden up here. It's the sunniest spot. They just made a sunny spot. And for security reasons, they wanted it hidden. We started and we said, why don't we just go ahead and finish it up today? So at least the array, I mean. We've got a lot of digging to do. So again, it's uh, late. <laughs> and yes, we're in shade now, but we were baking all day long. So, but we got that done and we can dress it and wire it up tomorrow. Okay, we're starting here back on day three. Look at our morning array just a cooking in this spot. And uh, beginning to do the trenching. Got 600 feet of an AC run up to a future building. So I've got an intersection now with that and our solar con two inch conduit. This is a be direct berry four aught. And we're gonna throw a PEX line in there. So it'll have water up to this garden area that he wants it to be. So two extra panels. We'll put them in a shipping container. That's just in case there's any damage in the future. It's nice to have some extras, tree branches, people run into things by mistake, and uh, sometimes even on purpose. But I'm just happy with that layout there. This thing is gonna cook all deciduous trees here so the leaves are coming down a little bit. It's gonna really do well here. All right, so this was the original array put on this property before we got here. Probably gonna end up taking that down. They were basically gutting, they bought this house, but they're gutting it and right down to the everything, down to the walls. They're putting the rewiring the whole place. We've got a pump house. We're gonna bring a PEX line to. So we've moved the solar up on the hill where the sunny place is up there and got it away from the pond, the lake. And uh, that's gonna be our mechanical room where the inverters, batteries, Generator all is gonna go there. So I got a trench. That's my final destination So I Got to pick a path can't see the machine, but it's about there And I'm gonna come down tie into the water. I'm gonna end up tearing through their existing water and solar And I'm gonna remove some concrete up here. Let's go look at the mechanical room. All right, our final destination, inverters. A room for a second inverter. 200 amp panel. Back-to-back -back wiring troughs. Um, I'm gonna put the bypass outside. Generator hookup outside. And then three stacks, 30 kilowatt hours each, 90 kilowatt hours of the Rubik's Gigas. And we're just uh, making sure everything fits. We'll probably do, I brought an extra wiring trough to combine these into one. 
and then we'll pipe that into the five foot wiring trough that'll have the inverter and panel on it. So that was the goal of the Gigastax, to have a battery that didn't need a rack. It was on good casters. Makes it life much easier when you have that much weight. Okay, it's day three and a half. <laughs> We're pushing to get this thing done this week. Thank you. And we just pulled in the solar, 400 and some feet. I'm gonna have a bypass out here and a 200 amp pass-through outdoor panel because we're feeding these direct berry. I'm going 500 feet to a new shop up on the hill and then the solar goes up there and then we have a feeder over here to the house. So a fusible disconnect and then we run an SER cable for on inside the house to the house panel. The bypass will be, because of the generator, we'll be able to run the whole place on the Jenny, which is a 20kW, if need be. And otherwise it will be there as support for battery charging and two-wire start, of course, automatic. And I'm uh, just getting that ready to go. Got to get, when you do these, you got to get, uh, first you got to get a battery, then you need to have the power conductors, the the battery charging circuit, and then also the um, two-wire start back here on these Wago connectors. Another peaceful off-grid installation. We got three arrays up there. Just roughly backfilled the trench. I usually leave it pretty rough when it's in the woods. I don't want the water to pick up any trench in any way, so it'll randomly run off. And uh, and down the hill, powerhouse is on the other side of the barn dominium. Beautiful pond, beautiful time of day with the sun coming through these leaves, all changing color here in Alabama. Basically, has gutted this place and started over, and it's beautiful down here. So I'm gonna go check on the guys, see how they're coming along, see what how to figure out. We're trying to get out of here tomorrow, but. Gotta power this baby up. I've seen this mount before, I don't know what it is, but the panels are off. It's pretty decently built. I hope they didn't pour too much concrete, but they probably did. So, okay, this is really gonna open up their view nicely. And this is what we were looking for. M3 is that morning array. The other arrays are just starting to get some light, but the morning array is cranking along here about was about 10 to 11 amps more than the others. That's uh, gets a good start with your coffee in the morning. So, um, yeah, we're just started cranking in here, charging these batteries up. Well, the reason they found me out is this original homeowner had an 8K installed. I don't know how long ago it was. And they tracked me down on YouTube. This 8K with a couple of VG4s. This was lead acid. They added those. They're not quite charging right, but anyway, this is all coming out. This ran this panel. Well, you can see this house is pretty much gutted and they put a new QO panel in. So it's over on our system now. Got a 200 amp disconnect on the house. A nice mechanical room here. We're making 13.4 kilowatts off the top of the hill there. And we got a 90 kilowatt hours of Rubik's batteries. We got two 1,000 amp bus bars in there. Built for expansion, another 15K could go in there. You can add all the batteries. They're gonna add a mini split in here. And then outside we added a outdoor panel with pass-through lugs. And we got a 600, about 500 foot feed of 4 aught up to a future shop. They're adding a well pump out here. This is all on the system. Our typical bypass generator on the bottom, solar and generator up top, and then I've got a Cummins 20 kilowatt propane. The propane is coming around the back. We didn't get that done this week. Electrically, it's done. Just needs gas. So there are electricians here working on this barn dominium, and uh, so we basically decommissioned the old solar system. I dug the old <laughs> poles out. It was a nice little solar system on a really nice pond and we pulled that stuff out and 
told the customer if he built a power shed that would really work well he did that and then he built a little shed for the well house so he's in good shape my goal was to see water and power and that has happened so i'm going home i'm gonna get a polaris ride up to the top all right these are just cranking right along here all three arrays we're making about 13.5 kilowatt hours down at the inverter that's 420 feet away so it's doing an awesome job the batteries were at 50 percent this morning they're at 82 83 percent now at one o'clock so again this was just carved out of the middle of a property this space and um, so nobody knows this is the solar is here and that's a, a wonderful thing and so this is going to serve them well and we opened up the view down for their barn dominium over the pond so there was a lot of benefits to putting the solar up here all right if you need any help installing designing need some components let me know this is engineer 775 signing out